If you've been curious about software defined radios or SDRs and wondered how to get started, then this video is for you. We will learn by doing. To get started, you will need to purchase an SDR and load an open source software application on your PC named SDR plus plus. I would like to mention that I will be creating a definitive guide video on how to use SDR plus plus soon. Alexander call sign O N five R Y Z also known as Rise Earth, and that's spelled R Y Z E R T H is the developer who wrote SDR plus plus. Alexander will review my content for accuracy and make suggestions before I publish. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to amazon.com and we're going to search for RTL dash SDR. So once you type that in the search box, hit enter, and you will see a lot of different SDRs that show up. The one that I suggest that you purchase is the one that is on the screen. This is an RTL SDR V4. This is the newest one. It comes with uh, two different uh, links of rabbit ear antennas and some stands. I will leave the link in the description and I do not make any money if you purchase from this link. But I can tell you that uh, this is not a fake and it works well. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the RTL SDR Quick Start Guide. I will include the link in the description. So once you copy that into your browser, uh, you will see this page. And what we're going to do is scroll down through this. Here they're telling you about uh, there's a lot of uh, RTL SDR clones or fakes and uh, you do not want these and this tells you how you can tell uh, which is real, which is counterfeit. On this page, it tells you how to uh, get your RTL SDR working with many different software packages. In our case, we're going to use an open source software project called SDR++. So we're going to keep scrolling down the page here. And we're going to find the area where it says alternative software. And you can read through the details here, but the Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the Zadig link. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to open this up in a new tab. And I'm going to click on this. And what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to download the newest version, which as of today is Zadig version 2.9. So let's go ahead and download that. Okay, and it is downloaded. So we're going to head over to our downloads directory and here this is and this is an application 
So I'm going to double click on it. And uh, I am running Windows 11, so I have to click yes here. And up comes Zadig. Close some windows here. I'm going to come back to the quick start guide. Now, you have to be very, very careful with this uh, Zadig application. It can cause serious problems on your computer if you just click around and try guessing what, you know, what, what this or that does. So you need to follow these instructions very, very carefully. Notice it says in Zadig on line four, go to options, list all devices. And make sure this option is checked. So we're going to click on options and we're going to click list all devices. And uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select bulk interface from the drop down. Uh, by the way, I forgot to say, you should have your uh, RTL SDR plugged in to a USB port at this point. Now, they go on to tell you that uh, you can also see Blog 4 show up. So we're going to select that and then the next thing it tells us to do is double check that USB ID shows and it's right here what we want to look at. So if we look we have OBDA and then 2838 and so the the very next thing that we're going to do is you will see replace driver if this is the first time that uh, you're installing. And in my case, I'm reinstalling it. So I am now going to click on reinstall driver. So this could take a few minutes. So I'm going to uh, pause the video and then we will continue. So we can see that the driver was installed successfully. Okay, we have now installed the Zadig driver. So the next step is we want to install SDR++. So notice I'm still on the RTL SDR quick start page. I'm in the SDR++ section. And the directions are, are pretty clear here. Uh, if we look on uh, number two here, it says head to www.sdrpp.org and you'll see what's shown up below number three. Well, we're going to take a little different path. As it turns out, there's nightly builds. And if you want to be able to use the very latest features of SDR++, you want to go and download from the nightly release page. So I'm going to put the link in the description for this. And we're going to move on over to this tab. 
and in our case we want the SDR PP Windows X64 zip file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And that is downloaded. And I'm going to pop open my Windows uh, download directory and I'm going to right click on the zip file and I'm going to say extract all. And we'll just put it in the downloads directory. Uh, in your installation you're probably going to want to install this in another directory. So if that is the case, you're going to hit browse and browse over to whatever directory that you choose to use. So continuing, we're going to next click on extract. And we will close this dialog box up. And so what I'm going to do, I'm in the downloads directory. And I'm going to double click. And there's one more double click that we need to do on the, the directory here. And once you get to this directory, we now see the SDR++ icon in application. So what we want to do next is we want to double click on the icon to start up SDR++. So once again this is uh, an application that was downloaded from the internet and Windows is going to want to make sure that uh, you approve running this particular executable. So we're going to click on more info. And we're going to come on down here and say run anyway. And you should only have to do this one time. And here we have SDR++ started up. And I'm going to enlarge in the window here. And I'm going to collapse some of the other dialog boxes that we have open. And so here you go. We have SDR++. And notice this is version 1.2.0. And it was built on October 2nd. 2024. So, hey, how about that? That's the day we're making this video. So, the other thing I recommend that you, you do is you see the icon down in the taskbar. I suggest you consider right clicking on that and pin to the taskbar. Now that we have SDR++ downloaded, uh, installed, and we've launched the application, the very next thing that we need to do is we need to come over to the leftmost column under Source and to the right of where it says Air Spy, we're going to click on this drop down and what we're doing is we're going to select the SDR that we are using. In our case we're using RTL SDR. So we're going to scroll down through the list. Sure enough here is RTL SDR. So we're going to left click on that. Now below RTL SDR the, the software has noticed that, hey, there's one of these plugged in, and right here it is, generic RTL, uh, the number, and to the left of this is a serial number. Now, right now, we're only using one RTL SDR. For future applications, you may want to buy more than one. 
And in order for software to tell one from the other, we have to use different serial numbers. But more on that later. So let's get right to it and let's start up the software. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and just to the left of the speaker is the start button. So we're going to click on that. Stretch is one of the, I think if you ask me, probably one of, if not the hardest stretch they have to go through. If they get one of those games, I will be personally shocked. But if they go 0 and 4, they'll be 3 and 6 at that point. So, as you can see, this was pretty darn easy. I'm tuned to a FM radio station, and in the United States, the FM radio station started at 88 megahertz and go up to 108 megahertz. So if you look at the uh, where the 9.9 the nine is, uh, this is where megahertz is. If you go to the left of that, that's gigahertz. And to the right of the 9.9, nine, these three are kilohertz and then hertz are here. Now, on, a, on occasion, when you're listening to weaker stations, you're going to want to come over here to the left column, and there's a slider for gain. And you're going to want to use that. The other thing I want to mention at this time is you need to also come down the left column underneath radio, and you need to select the modulation. So once again, uh, for the broadcast FM, that is WFM, and that stands for Wideband FM. If you would like to join me in exploring the exciting world of SDRs, please consider subscribing and liking my videos and don't forget to hit the notification button so you will be notified when I post new content. Once again, this is Paul, the SDR guy, and thank you for watching.